have you back from Arizona, by the way. Hope you bring some of the weather with you. Well, winter's been rough these past couple of weeks, hasn't it? Had nothing to do with the second one. That one's not on me. The first one was. This one is not. I wanted the first snow. This one I had no part of. But you know what? The clocks have been moved forward. Spring, we are moving straight away into. I'm going to be honest. I'm ready to preach. Last week, Brother Eric spoke. The week before, we had to cancel because of a frozen parking lot. So how many people, I want you to think about this before we start now. You, you would say, I'm just glad to be out of the house. I want you to remember that if I go a little long this morning, okay? So I'm just glad, I could be sitting in my chair again, and I've had enough of that. I'm ready to be out. You know, life can change in a heartbeat. It's amazing. You can be going, and everything just seems so great. You feel like you're just conquering the world. And in a matter of just just a blink of an eye, everything changes. That's how it was for the disciples. Open your Bibles, if you would, to Matthew chapter 26. We're going to read a rather long narrative, but this happened in basically the course of an hour. I want to read two statements. And then I want to read the narrative, and then we'll kind of dissect it. Verse 35 of Matthew chapter 26. Peter said to him, even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said the same. Say that with me. All the disciples said the same. They said what? Even if I must die with you. I will never deny you. That's in verse 35. Now I want you to look at verse 56. Very last sentence. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Even if I must die with you, I will never deny you. I will be beside you every step of the way. You're Jesus. You're the master. You're the Messiah. I'll go with you through whatever is to come. 21 verses later, every one of them left him, and they fled. Every one of them. How can that change in so quick of a time? Basically an hour. Life can change in a heartbeat. Let me tell you, we get one chance at this life. We need to get it right. I have found five things, and there's probably more. It's certainly not a comprehensive list, but five things God's been speaking to me about in this passage where the disciples missed it. And they went from that just sold out radical following disciples of Jesus to those that denied him and left him. Five areas where they missed it. And I want to tell you this morning. The reason I'm talking about this is because I see these similarities in the church today. And I see where we are similar. That is a tough word to say. Similarly. Somebody give. Who's the human thesaurus? Give me something different. Besides, that we are likewise missing. Let's read the narrative. Don't laugh at my West Kentucky pronunciation. Verse 30, and we're going to read all the way to 56. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, you will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Now, this is not open for interpretation. As Jesus said this, I mean, of course, we can see back through the great chasm of time that how this was played out. But it's not open for interpretation. They should have gotten it straight up. 
Jesus said, guys, the scripture is going to be fulfilled. You know the prophecy. It says, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. I'm going to die, guys. But in three days, I'll be resurrected. And then I'll go before you to Galilee. Let's meet at Galilee in three days, okay? Is there any other way to interpret that than what he said? After I'm raised, I'll go before you to Galilee. Peter answered him, though they will all fall away, I will never fall away. You know, there's a verse here that has nothing to do with the sermon, but it's so true for all of us. Take heed when you think you stand, lest you fall. Peter said to him, I'm, I'm sorry, Jesus said, Truly I tell you this very night before the rooster crows, you'll deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said the same. So Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. We're traveling into the Mount of Olives. He's now in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and I pray. So he left the disciples there, but he took three of them with him. Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. And he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me, guys. And going a little further, he fell on his face. This is Jesus speaking. He falls on his face and he prays. My father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples. I don't want to focus on that verse. I've preached on this before. We, we should understand what Jesus is saying. Is there any other way for this to happen? Because my flesh doesn't want to have to encounter what I'm about to encounter. But it's not about me. I choose you. I choose your will. And he came back to the disciples. And he found them sleeping. He found them sleeping. Jesus is the only one in the garden that night that understands what's about to happen. Although he shouldn't have been the only one in the garden that night that understands what was going to happen because he told them clearly what was going to happen. But he's the only one that got it. If they would have only known. If they would have only grasped it. The gravity of the situation. They're still reveling from the meal they shared at the Last Supper. Which don't misunderstand me. When my belly gets full. My eyes get heavy. Hallelujah. I experience that on a daily basis. But they miss the heart of what's going on. Jesus came back. And they're sleeping. And he's so sorrowful. And he says, could you not watch with me this one hour? Watch and pray that you don't enter into temptation. If they would have only grasped the, blah, grasped, man, that's another tough word. If they would have only taken hold of that. You're going to fall in the temptation. Stay awake. Awake. He said, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. If I had to say that I have a life verse, I have found that to be true. My spirit's willing a lot, but my flesh is so weak. There's a reason, though, we need to walk by the spirit and not according to the flesh. And for the second time, he went away and prayed. My father, if this cannot pass from me unless I drink it, your will be. And again, and he came and he found them sleeping. He had already woken them up once. He had told them what's going to happen. They decided to sleep in the midst of it. He comes back and rattles their cages, said, guys, wake up. You're going to fall into temptation. Wake yourselves up. He goes away. He comes back. Shh. A 
let's not be too hard on them, man. Just look at the distinction of what's going on. One of the encounters says that as Jesus was praying, he was so troublesome that he was sweating drops of blood. Jesus in this situation and the disciples taking it easy. Finally, Jesus says, sleep and take your rest later on. The hour is at hand and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise and let us be going. My betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve. And with him a great crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, the one I kiss is the man, Jesus. He came up to Jesus at once and said, greetings, Rabbi. And he kissed him. And Jesus said to him, friend, do what you came to do. Then they came up and laid hands on Jesus and they seized him. And behold, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his head. We'll get to this in a minute. But how true it is. Instead of being spirit led, we immediately respond in what we think Jesus wants us to do. Instead of conforming our life to what Jesus already told us he wanted us to do. I mean, that's not a bad thing. We would think, that's that's great, man. Get to chopping. He chopped the ear off. You do not mess with Jesus. I told you, even if I have to die with you, I'll never deny it. It won't happen. Give me the sword. Jesus looks at him. Notice at this point, everybody's still with him. Every one of them are still with him. And Jesus says, put the sword back into its place. For all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Don't you think that I cannot appeal to my father and he will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels? But how then should the scriptures be fulfilled that it must be so? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowd, Have you come out against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching and you did not seize me, but all this has taken place that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all of the disciples left him. Father, as we come before you this morning, Lord, what I desire in my life, and exactly the question that Tom asked this morning, where are we going? Lord, what I desire in the lives of our body here is that we'll follow you all the way to the cross. Lord, we don't want to be halfway believers. Lord, we want to be with you come what may. Lord, we want to be people of devotion that live our lives in the spirit, that live our lives according to the plan that you have destined for us. We don't want to miss it, Lord. We don't want to miss it. Help us this morning. Amen. Should have been a time when jubilation broke out. An interesting study I did one time was to look through the scriptures and find out exactly how many times Jesus told the disciples precisely what was going to happen. It's amazing. It really is amazing. There should not be one question as to what the plan was. But over and over and over and over again, Jesus said, hey, on the third day, I'm going to rise. They're going to kill me, but I'm going to be risen on the third day. Praise the Lord. He said, you're asking for a sign, but no sign should be given but the sign of Jonah. 
just as he was in the belly of the well for three days, so shall the Son of Man be in the belly of the earth for three days. And then I'll rise again. Praise the Lord. Over and over and over and over again, he told them the plan. This should be a time of joyous jubilation. Praise God. The Messiah is here. The plan of the kingdom is about to be established. God is good. The time has come. They've just had the Last Supper. All is good. They're in the garden. The first mistake they made, though, they were asleep. Now, they were physically asleep, as several are in this building this morning. But just kidding. It happens, believe it or not. Joking. Totally, totally joking. Feel free to take your rest. But the other thing they were, they were they were spiritually asleep. They were missing it. As I've been thinking about this, what a picture of the state of the church. You know, we might be aware of things that's happening in the world. But truthfully, where it should be rising us to action and raising us to action. We're asleep in the midst of it. Let me tell you, the greatest days of the church are right before us. Simultaneously, the most intense days of persecution are also right in front of us. If we don't rise to this occasion and sleep right through it, we're going to miss our God-given destination and appointment in this season. Let me tell you something. Your comfort zone is about to be interrupted in a massive way. I believe that. It is about to be utterly decimated. And I want to encourage you this morning, do not sleep through it. Don't act like it's not coming. It's what the disciples were doing. They were asleep. And the very ones who was betraying Jesus was in path to the garden. And they were asleep when they should have been rising to action. They were asleep. As you hear things in the world that how everything's going south, the downward spiral has started. Awake, awake, O oh sleeper, and prepare yourself. God needs you in this time. How many times we miss those God given appointments? I almost did last night. My wife and I went to the mall. I have fallen in love with a new blend of coffee. That was the sole reason to go. There's a long story. It's not for today. But as we're walking out, coffee in hand, there's this woman. She's in her mid-20s. And she's got another girl in her mid-20s. We're walking out by the food court. And she trips and falls over the curb on her knee. She just laying there hurting, and I look back. We were already past. I just look back. Oh my goodness! And all of a sudden, I heard out of my ears these kids laughing at me, which I understand. And I started walking towards my car, and I felt the check of the Holy Spirit. And I went back to this woman, and Jenny and I are like, "We're not medical doctors. We have no idea. Oh, does this bend? I mean." <laughs> We couldn't, it's kind of that moment where we said, you know, silver and gold, have I none? You know, I don't have any medical advice to give you here. She said, I'm, I'm cold. Come find out, these are two Muslim women. They're going back to Dubai next week. And I reached down, and I said, let me take you to your car. I picked her up, and I carried her to her car. And I set her in the front seat of her car. And I knelt down, and I said, ma'am, all I ask is that you let me pray for you. Stuck my hands on her knees. And I prayed that the power of God would just unleash. And I kept saying the name of Jesus. Lord, let her know that Jesus is God. Let her know that Jesus is Lord. Let Jesus, the victory that you accomplished, be hers today. And let her see you. Then I left. She never said anything. I believe that the Lord healed her. But one thing I do know, she knows the name of Jesus. It was awesome. But let me tell you how quick, that's one time I actually did what God told me to do. 
And how many times we just callously dismiss what's going on? One check, and I could have been sleeping right through it. Been so excited about my Tribute Blend coffee. Hallelujah. And I turned around, and I felt this check. No, this is a God appointment. This is turn around. I tell you, there's God appointments in your life every single day. You might not be physically asleep, but we are so mentally bombarded with stuff of this world that we miss our God appointments every single day. And we're asleep in the midst of it should be our awakening. Nothing should push us more than being used by God in the midst of turmoil. And the disciples missed it. They missed it. The first mistake they made is they were asleep. They were asleep physically. They didn't recognize the signs of the times. And Jesus says this, sleep and take your rest later on. I say that to you too. There will be a time that you enter into your rest. It's not now. Now is not the time to be asleep, church. Now is not the time to be kicking back and hitting autopilot on your walk with Christ. Now is the time to be preparing yourself and readying yourself. See, for them, Jesus was going away, but for you, it's different. He's coming. See, I want you to hear this. For them, Jesus was leaving. But for us, you need to ready yourself because he's coming. Jesus is coming again so soon. And unfortunately, he's going to be coming back to a slumbering church. And it's time for us to awaken and get ready for the arrival of the key. He is coming. He is coming. And it's time for us to wake into that. We don't want to miss that. We don't want to miss that. We don't want to miss that. Just like he told them that he's leaving. He told us he's coming. There's no reason for us not to understand the scripture. That's the first mistake they made. Mistake number two. They weren't walking in the understanding of the Lord's word. They weren't walking in the understanding of the Lord's word. We are so childish in this. And I don't mean this offensively. We have selective hearing. Men, we struggle with this a whole lot. When our wives are giving us love chores to do, go to the grocery and get this, do this, do this. And if you would, do this. And then we hear one thing that we actually like. Won't you pick up some candy while you're there too? We come back with a bag of candy. <laughs> Why is that? Because that's what we heard. It's what we wanted to hear. Anybody else or am I throwing myself under the bus alone? I am extremely guilty of selective hearing. They were with God though. Jesus told them explicitly what the kingdom was. Over and over and over again. This is my kingdom. This is what it's like. But they missed it because they heard what they wanted to hear. And I suggest to you that that's one of the main reasons they left him when times got hard. Because they realized their agenda they had in their mind had just been crushed. When Peter took the sword off and Jesus says, no, that's not the way we're going. He said, I could call down angels and end this right now. That's not the kingdom we're building. If that's what you're going to live by, you'll die by it. Put it up. Then they all left. Because they heard what they wanted to hear. Tom asked a great question this morning. Where are we going? Where are you going? Don't just hear what God wants you to hear. Don't, you, don't just hear what you want God to say. Hear what he's actually saying. And we've got this thing in the church, and I made it my Facebook post this morning. We don't conform our lives to what the word of God actually says. We try to twist the word of God to make it line up with the life that we want to live. Let me tell you, that's a mistake. But we're guilty. We all do it. And they made that mistake too. They had an agenda of what they thought the kingdom was going to be. I'm sick of Rome. I want them gone. 
I want to overthrow them. And then Jesus comes and they start to amass this huge ministry. And he starts talking about a kingdom. He starts talking about 12 thrones. You're going to sit beside me in the kingdom. Who does that not sound good to? <laughs> yes, I can be a part of that. 12 thrones. You mean I'll be sitting on a throne beside me? Yes, count me in. I'll be a part of that. And then Jesus kept saying, hey, guys, I'm going to be taken from you. No, no, I'm not going to hear that. You're missing that part, Jesus. But give me the throne. They hear what they want to hear. They did not understand the word of the Lord. Third mistake that they made. They weren't walking in submission and obedience to the Lord's word. Not only did they not understand it. It's actually a rejection of what the word of the Lord is. See, there comes a point in all of our lives when we truly understand what it is that God's saying, and you have a choice to make. Will I accept this, or am I going to reject this? Let me tell you what we do. The word of the Lord says, in this life, you will have trouble. We don't receive that. Our heart is to remove as much trouble as we possibly can. The word of the Lord says, be ye holy, for I am holy. But we say, I'll live how I want to live, and I'll still claim the name of Christ. The word of the Lord says, forgive and you will be forgiven. We reject that and say, God understands me. He knows the pain I've walked through. He's okay with me holding on to this for a little bit. The word of the Lord says, love your enemies. We reject that and we say, smite them with all thy holy smiting. What's the core of that issue? We are not walking in obedience and submission to what the word of the Lord actually is saying. That's where they were too. I think they got to that point, and I think that's why they left. They seriously understood it. They understood it finally, and it clicked. And they said, I'm not paying that price. I'd pay a price for a throne. I'd go to the death for you, even with a, for a throne. I won't go to the cross for you for that. My question to you is, how far are you willing to follow? Here's the great thing about our Savior. He'll let you follow him all the way to the cross. He'll let you follow him as close as you want to. But we reject what we don't like. Mistake number four they made. They weren't being led by the Spirit, but were living in the flesh. Not only did they reject it, Peter takes up a sword. And he chops off this guy, his name is Malchus, he cuts off his ear. Not once did he say, Lord, you want me to chop this guy's ear off? He didn't say, hey, hey, Messiah, hey, hey, chosen one, I got a sword right here, I think we can take him. He just reacted. Let me tell you something that I have found in my life. Any time that I react in the flesh 100% of the time it's going to be wrong 100% of the time when Richie reacts in the flesh it's wrong that was wrong of Peter he shouldn't have done that but that's what he did picked up the sword that was pretty good actually and he missed it let me tell you how you walk according to the spirit. You don't desire and walk according to the flesh. It takes time in the presence of Jesus. If you're not spending the time with the Lord that you need to, good luck walking in the spirit. It comes in the presence of God and saturating your mind with the word of God. And spend the time in the presence of the Holy Spirit and building yourself up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. If you're not having those times and we're out there trying to walk and 
fight against the devil in our own flesh, you're about to find yourself on your face. You're a Christian, but you're not strong enough to beat him in your flesh. It takes the Spirit of God living on the inside of you to overcome the evil one. That's the greatest truth I learned as a Christian. I can't do it. I can't do it. I came to the altar a long time ago. God, I'm yours. And then I left thinking, all right, I'm going to live this life now. Till Monday morning. I found myself being a part of the same crude jokes, using the same crude language, doing everything I was doing before. I wanted Jesus as my Savior because I didn't want to go to hell. I still don't want to go there. I just wasn't ready for Him to live through me. I just thought, I, I'm going to do it myself. That did not work very well. That does not come without spending time in the presence Jesus. And you're still not perfect. We're never going to get to that level where we get it all figured out. We've reached the pinnacle of success. We're perfected. But let me tell you, the more time you spend in His presence, there's not a single second that's wasted there. Not a second. Wake up now. Here's the fourth thing that they did. The fifth thing. They weren't walking in love. To me, this is the most powerful, powerful vision sight in this entire story. Jesus has been so troubled, sweating drops of blood, praying, God, I don't want to have to do this, but if this is the only way, then I'll do it. Your will be done. They come in. He goes back. They're asleep. He goes back a second time. They're asleep. The third time, he just says, guys, get up there. They're here to take me. They come at him with clubs in one hand and swords in another. Peter rises up in his flesh, chops off an ear. Disciples are starting to rally and call, let's do this. We got this. Jesus still stained on his face from drops of blood running down. Reaches up on the ground. Picks up this bloody ear. And the very man holding the sword in one hand and a club in the other, he reaches up on his head and he puts the ear back on. And he heals him right in the midst of this serious situation, this heavy situation. Jesus reacted in love. What a powerful, powerful image. See, to Peter, that was the enemy. Once you take my Jesus away, I hate you. I'll get you. But Jesus did not lose love even in the midst of that. I tell you, any time that you're not walking in love, we're missing the heartbeat of God. And I missed it more times than I hit it. That ought to motivate every decision that we make. That's what it truly means when he says, this is how they will know that you're mine. The great love that you have for one another. And man, how Jesus modeled that. With a guy with a club in one hand and a sword in the other, picking up a bloody ear off the ground and healing him. And then furthermore, he takes it one step further. That wasn't the end of his story. He goes all the way to the cross. And he looks down at these Romans with splattered blood all over their garments and hands for where they nailed nails in his hands and nailed nails in his feet. And they're sitting there gambling for his clothing. And Jesus reacted in love. And he looks down and he says, Father, don't mind. They don't even know what they're doing. Don't hold that against them. Man, that's love. That is so much love. Because the people that hurt me, I want them to hurt. The people that curse me, I want them to be cursed. 
people that slander me, I want somebody to slander them. Let me tell you, that's not the heart of Jesus. That is not the heart of Jesus. Jesus is calling us to respond with his heart. Come and come and come and come and come. These are serious times that we're living in. And just like those disciples, we've walked into our own garden. Right here at zero hour, Jesus is coming back soon. Your comfort zone is about to be disrupted. I admonish you these five things today, just like they were true for them. They are still so true for you today. Awake. Awake. Fight against that spirit of slumber that says, I'm okay. Throw the autopilot away and get serious about your relationship with Jesus. It's not time to be slumbering through this. Understand the word of the Lord. Understand what he's telling you in this time. You have to understand it. And furthermore, you have to submit and obey that word. Don't just understand it. Understanding without obedience is useless. I'll say that again. Understanding without obedience is useless. That's why we waste a lot of time at church. Because a lot of times we can agree, that's, that's a good point. But if we don't take that and apply it to our life, we've just wasted everybody's time. We are to conform our lives to what this book says. And when we know it says something, we are to conform our lives to what he says it ought to be. I don't know whose Bible this is, but I'm tearing it all to pieces. Understand and obey. Live according to the Spirit. Don't walk according to the flesh. And let everything that you do be motivated out of a heart of love that you'll find from the heart of Christ. Let me tell you, if you do those five things, you won't find yourself like the disciples. I suggest to you this morning, if they would not have made those five mistakes, verse 56 would not have happened. Where it said, and they all departed and they left. But they made those five mistakes. And if you make those five mistakes, it's easy to leave. Because you've already missed it. Here's my heart. I want you to make it. And the temptation for us to leave is just as strong as it was for them. And as times get tougher, that temptation is going to get stronger. But if you get those things right, you will follow him all the way to the end. Father, we thank you that you don't give up on us. Lord, we thank you that as we are flawed, Lord, just like we sang, your grace runs so much deeper, Lord. Lord, we depend on you. We depend on your grace. We depend on your strength. Lord, I ask you these five things in my own life, and I repent, Father, for the times that I've made it about something else. Lord, I repent for the times that I've slept when I should have been awake. Lord, I repent for the times that I didn't understand what you were saying because I didn't want to hear it. I repent for the times I didn't submit, Lord, and I didn't obey your heart because I was walking in the flesh, Lord, and not living in the Spirit. Lord, I repent of not having the heart of love that you desire for us to have. Lord, I want to get those things right. I want to get those things right. And forgive me for when I have. Let's all stand to our feet this morning. I'm going to do something different this morning. If you'd like to join me in that. And you'd just like to say, Richie, I want to get those five things right too. I just want you to slip out of your seat and come down front. You just say, Richie, I want to make those things the way I live my life as well. Slip out of your seat and come down front. I want us to have a corporate prayer together this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise 
Thank you, Father. Thank you. Go ahead. Great message. Awesome man of God. I love this man. He's humble. He's a humble young man. I try to get with him as much as I can. <laughs> 